Hello everyone, back to you into part two of the 11th winter 2020 20 update. So here we go again, it's time uh, for another winter update, part two of the 11th winter update. So we did part one of this update, uh, we released that on Sunday, looking at things like uh, so activity, sea surface temperature, anomaly duration, snow cover, and all of that stuff was in part one. We're going to be focusing on the analogs. And uh, this week, we're a very interesting week, I think, this week. I think there's going to be a lot of interest in this, you know, People will be keen to, to see the data for this. So we're going to be looking at winters following big hurricane seasons, both in terms of overall uh, storm numbers, you know, how many storms you have in a uh, season, and also in terms of ACE, accumulated cyclone energy. Uh, so I think it could be quite a lot of interest in this one. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And I shall uh, talk you through the data uh, on this 11th winter 2020 20 update part two um, in a moment. Uh, just to say that we've released a 10 to 14 day uh, video update. So uh, check that out, see what's going on. And uh, yeah, have a look at that. We released that earlier on uh, today. This is going to be quite a long video, uh, of course. So uh, it will be placed on the winter updates page with a written summary going over everything that we discussed in the video and that'll be tomorrow morning, Tuesday uh, morning, when I shall get that up for you on Winter Updates page at gavsweathervids.com. So you'll be able to have a read of that and watch the video on demand at the website and also at YouTube whenever you would like to do that. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. Uh, so if you are enjoying uh, Winter Updates at the moment, please can you click like, let us know in the comments what you're thinking. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the Gaz uh, YouTube channel, of course. Big, big thank you to uh, Richard Trott for the amazing and wonderful and fantastic uh, winter updates gift. Everybody loves the winter updates gift uh, this year. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much to uh, Richard. I was going to say thank you to Shryan, uh, my good friend Shryan Bruin, for all of uh, Shryan's help on this uh, update. So thank you, thank you so much to uh, Shryan. Right, so I think we should get on with it. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy, and let's do this then. So just to bring up to date, as this is like a hurricane special, just to bring you up to date with how things are looking with the 2020 hurricane season as of uh, today, when I'm recording the video, 15th of uh, November. So these are our scores on the doors. So uh, we have had uh, 31 uh, total tropical uh, depressions. Uh, that is a record high tide with 2005. We have had 30. Yes, that's three zero. Incredible number. Tropical storms. That is a record high. We have had 13 hurricanes and six, uh, no, five, uh, major category three or above hurricanes. That could well go to six when you are watching this video because we are expecting um, another major hurricane uh, at any moment, you know, in, in the uh, Caribbean. So, so when you watch this on Monday evening, it could well be that we have had six major hurricanes. Absolutely incredible and phenomenal uh, hurricane season. It's unbelievable how big this season has been. I'll just very quickly explain why we're looking at uh, hurricanes. So this is a Joe Bastardi theory. So I have to give a heads up to uh, Joe Bastardi, formerly from uh, AccuWeather, now at Weatherbell. So the theory with this is basically what a hurricane, a tropical storm or a hurricane is doing. It's transporting uh, energy. It's transporting heat from one part of the world to another. So this is where hurricanes and tropical storms begin, of course, in the tropical Atlantic and also around here as well. These are very warm parts of the earth, of course, just north of the equator. So these tropical areas have large amounts of warmth, large amounts of heat, and so consequently, large amounts of energy. And to stop these areas from overheating, uh, we get these uh, disturbances uh, developing, initially just as thunderstorms, then as areas of low pressure, then as tropical storms, and then 
potentially as hurricanes. And, and basically, these systems are sort of moving energy, they're moving heat northwards. So, so uh, if you get lots and lots of hurricanes and tropical storms pushing uh, northwards from the tropics into the mid-latitudes, uh, transporting heat, if you like, transporting energy northwards, and eventually go from the mid-latitudes to, like, the high-latitudes, if you get a lot of that going on uh, within uh, a season, if you have a lot of warmth ultimately being dumped within the pole and within, uh, you know, the Arctic regions and, and the high latitudes up here, if you get lots of that, it can translate back in the winter to an increased risk of uh, northern blocking. You know, all of this heat, <coughs> excuse me, all of this heat and energy being dumped into the polar regions and the Arctic regions eventually translate back into an increased risk of high pressure within the normal latitudes, with, of high uh, latitude blocking. I'm not sure if there will be a connection with this and sun stratospheric warmings. You know, that would be something else to explore, whether you have a greater chance of a sun stratospheric warming in the Arctic or, or, or above the Arctic. Uh, you've had lots of uh, trouble storms and hurricanes. But the essential idea is that you are moving uh, warmth, uh, energy, heat from the south to the north and if you have a lot of energy being moved northwards then you increase the risk of northern blocking that's the theory and we're going to explain in a moment whether that um you know whether whether that is indeed the case uh when we look at our reanalysis so the first thing you look at is uh, ACE accumulated cyclone energy. And, and ACE is essentially like the amount of energy that these uh, storms uh, within the season are emitting. So uh, the, the criteria is like below normal, near normal, above average and hyperactive. We go all the way back to 1851 uh, with this. And Miss Watt Shrine has been keeping updated for us. So you go right way back to 1851 with this, in fact, in the year of 1851, we had a below normal hurricane season. Uh, we've got red just here. So that is when we have a hyperactive hurricane season, uh, of course. Uh, and, and like white is near normal, yellow is above average. Let's move down then to the current year. So this is how 2020 looks in terms of ACE and also in terms of total um, storms. So uh, up to the 15th of November, our ACE, our accumulated cyclone energy, is standing at 169.20 after 30 tropical storms, 13 hurricanes, and five, but probably soon to be six, uh, category three or above hurricanes, major hurricanes. And that places us hyperactive. So we have had a hyperactive hurricane season for ACE and also obviously with 30 tropical storms a record um obviously in terms of storm uh, numbers as well the last time we had a hyperactive hurricane season was in uh 2017 that had an ACE of 224.88 so we're a long way behind 2017 for our ACE um but nevertheless we are still within like hyperactive uh for, for ACE um now, there are years that have, like, um, below normal uh, uh, hurricane seasons for ACE. That will be followed by colder winters as well, though, by the way. So, for example, we've got 1978 just here, which was below normal for accumulated cyclone energy. That's followed by very cold winter of 78, 79. And uh, also, uh, we have 62, uh, 1962. Look at this. The, the hurricane season for the daddy, uh, 1962, only had an ace of 35.57 uh, in 1962. Very, very low ace number. Below average, of course, was followed by the daddy of cold winter. So we need to bear in mind, but we're just talking about on average here. So, so there will be, you know, there will be cold winter. But that are followed by um, by below normal uh, hurricane seasons, and equally there will be mild winters that follow hyperactive hurricane seasons. So we're looking to try and work out the averages, you know, the, the, the percentages, uh, if you like, though. 
Uh, so just to show you the uh, uh, the um, full list of hyperactive hurricane seasons. So it's actually been uh, 21, now with 2020, 22 hyperactive hurricane uh, seasons. The, the uh, lowest hyperactive hurricane season for ACE is actually uh, this one, 1955, uh, 158.17. This is where 2020 is at 169.20. So actually 2020 is at the low end of of uh, hyperactive, you know, it's uh, it's at the lower end of hyperactive compared to like the, the very very highest end of hyperactive, which is like these ones up here, nineteen thirty three, two thousand five, uh, eighteen ninety three, for example, are well well up in the two hundreds. But nevertheless, it's been a hyperactive hurricane season, and so what we're going to start off with is uh, is winters following hyperactive hurricane uh, seasons, and this is it then. So uh, we're going to go in like chronological or order from the weakest hyperactive to the strongest hyperactive. So we're going to explain that the weakest hyperactive uh, year was 1955, and the strongest was uh, 1933. Right, so uh, this is our first winter then. This is the winter of 1955-1956 um, at number 21 in the list of hyperactive uh, seasons. Remember, 2020, now it's 22 um, hyperactive uh, hurricane seasons. So this one, of course, it's a cold winter. 1955-1956 uh, uh, was a cold winter with high pressure to the north. Let's change the colour. Below average heights, low pressure to our south and east and bringing the wind from light and east. Easterly uh, direction. It's pretty mild early on in winter, and then it gets much, much colder uh, later on. Uh, severely cold for for February of 1956. Our next winter following a hyperactive hurricane season at number 20 is 2010-2011. This one with loads and loads and loads of northern blocking uh, early on in winter and below average heights to the south. Of course, this is the December to remember. December to remember follows a hyperactive hurricane season. Severely cold early in winter and then much milder later. Our next winter is 6970. Uh, so, again, following a hyperactive hurricane season, the 19th uh, most hyperactive hurricane season, if you like. This one has high pressure to the northwest, low pressure to our south and east, winds are in from the uh, east northeast. That's a pretty cold winter, uh, especially later on. Reasonably mild early, I think, but, uh, but later on it does get very, very cold and snowy. That loaded winter, if you like. Uh, number 18 for uh, our hyperactive hurricane seasons, uh, we've got 1886. This is how the winter of 1886-1887 is looking with below average heights to the north and winds in from west. But it does have some higher pressure to the east. I think that's a pretty cold winter, although you probably wouldn't re you know, realise it, think it, looking at the uh, reality. But I think that is quite a coldish winter for 1886-1887. Uh, number 17, we've got 1996-1997. So this is one of those uh, examples where the reanalysis chart doesn't really tell you a great deal about the winter, actually. It just has above average heights over to the east of the country, below average heights to the west, and also to the northeast. What you have to think with this one is that it's like very front-loaded. So it is cold early on, has a cold December, very cold around Christmas and New Year of 96 to 97, with uh, with freezing cold, east winds and snow. And um, that carries on into early January. And then it goes much milder uh, with a very mild, wet and windy February in 1997. And number 16, uh, the 16th most hyperactive hurricane season uh, was 1932. Uh, winter of 1932-1933 uh, looks like that, with high pressure to our east and northeast, low pressure to the south. Uh, winds in from the east. It looks like it actually a very cold winter, doesn't it? I don't think it's overly cold, but there is some cold weather at times. It's a very dry winter uh, as well. Um, then we've got 1964 at number 15 in terms of most hyperactive hurricane season. The winter of 1964-1965 is a cold winter. So this one has uh, below average heights to our south and east, above average heights away from the northwest. What do you think, everybody? Do you think we've got a trend here towards a colder winter? Let me know 
in the comments, please. Haven't got a trend towards colder winters uh, at this point. So, so yeah, high pressure is away to the northwest. Low pressure south southeast. This one again, it's not only cold early on. Gets colder later and uh, has a very cold sort of February and March in uh, 1965. Uh, then at number 14, we've got 1999. So this just proves a point, but, but there will always be exceptions. This is a very mild winter for 1999-2000, with high pressure sitting to our south. Low pressure is to the north, winds are in from the west. That's a mild 1990s uh, winter for 1999-2000. Then we've got uh, 0304, 2003, 2004 at number 13. So this one with above average heights out to our west, below average heights to our east. That's generally quite a mild winter, again, until it gets quite a lot colder late in February and into March. But overall, that's a reasonably mild uh, winter also. At number 12, very interestingly, uh, we have got uh, 1878, 1879. Look at this. So this is a severe winter. This is our first severe winter following uh, a, a, a hyperactive hurricane season. This is the 12th most hyperactive hurricane season in 1878. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so look at this. Northern blocking galore. Uh, around Greenland, below average heights to the south, low pressure to the south, winds in from the east and also from the northeast. Severely cold uh, for the winter of 1879. Uh, then we've got 1878, uh, 18, uh, we've got 1887, 1888, I should say this is another cold winter from the uh, 1800s, low pressure to the south, high pressure blocking to the north and the northwest winds again in from the east. That has a classic white Christmas, by the way, in, uh, in 1887, very, very cold Christmas to uh, New Year week. Um, and yeah, follows the 11th most hyperactive hurricane season. Uh, we've got 1998-1999 uh, coming in at number 10. So uh, obviously this one is a, is a milder winter with high pressure to uh, the southwest, low pressure to the north, winds in from west. It does have a few cold snaps. Generally though, that is a mild winter for 98-99. Right, top 10. Uh, so, number 9, the ninth most hyperactive hurricane season uh, for ACE is, uh, is uh, 1961. The winter of 1961-1962 looks like this, with high pressure to the west, low pressure to the east, winds in from the north. It's on off with cold weather. So it has a very cold spell around Christmas and New Year, has a prolonged sort of mild stormy spell through January to early February of 62, and then it gets very cold again, uh, like late in February through March of 1962. And it's a forgotten winter because, of course, the next winter is the daddy of cold winters. So nobody remembers the winter that came before it. But it did have its moments, actually. The winter of 1961-62 certainly had its moments for cold. Uh, at number eight, we've got 1950. The winter of 1950-1951 uh, shows below average heights, low pressure over top of UK and Western Europe as a deep trough. Above average heights out to west. Jet stream is plunging southwards. So uh, that's a very cold December in 1950. Front-loaded winter, cold in December, and then it gets milder as we go along. At number seven, uh, we've got 2017, 2018. So this is the beast from the east winter, of course, just a couple of years ago. So uh, the, the uh, hurricane season of uh, 2017 was the seventh most hyperactive hurricane season uh, on record, back to 1851. This one has low pressure to our east. High pressure is out to west. Jet stream is plunging southwards. And, uh, and yeah, we bring in uh, the east list. So so there's a nice snowy spell in December of 2017, but it's really in February that the beast from East bites. The beast bites in February. And number six, uh, the sixth most, high, most hyperactive hurricane season, it's 2004. The winter of 2004-2005 is not a particularly cold winter, um, but it does have high pressure out to the west. Generally, after the early part of winter, it gets colder later and has a very cold spell uh, through uh, through um, through late February and into March of 2005. 
Right, top five. At number five for the most hyperactive hurricane season, we've got uh, 1995. The winter of 95-96 is a classic cold winter, very easily winter with high pressure over Scandinavia, winds in from the east. The easy winds are on and off throughout the winter of 95-96. It begins in early December and we're still getting easterlies in the middle of April of 1996. And very, very cold, severely cold around Christmas as well uh, in 1995. Uh, at number four, we've got 1926. The winter of 1926-1927 is, is uh, just a very quiet winter, I think, with quite a lot of high pressure through northern and uh, western Europe as well. A little bit of a forgotten winter, uh, that one. Number three uh, for the... Uh, Third, you know, the third hyperactive hurricane season at number three is 1893-1894. This is a mild winter, though. So at number three, we've got a mild winter here, bringing in mild westerlies for 1893-1894. And number two, the second uh, most hyperactive hurricane season for ACE, uh, we've got 2005-2006. This is a winter that looks like it should be very cold. Looks like it's absolutely primed and perfect to be bringing bitterly cold easy winds. And yet somehow or other... It just never quite comes together during uh, this winter. The reanalysis would suggest a very cold winter, wouldn't it? With, with loads and loads of easy winds. But somehow or other, it just never quite comes together until like late February and into March of 2006, when we do finally get a prolonged spell of cold and quite wintry weather. But overall, not a particularly cold winter, despite the reanalysis looking like it should be. And then, as we explained uh, at the start of the video, the, uh, the most hyperactive hurricane season for ACE at number one is 1933. The winter of 1933-1934 is another anti-cyclonic winter. Lots of high pressure sitting more or less over top of the UK. It's quite a cold winter from high pressure. There is a little bit of snow, snowy weather during the winter of 19. 33, 19, 34. But I think the main thing that winter should remember for, again, is being a very, very dry uh, winter with a strong anticyclonic signal. And because it's anticyclonic, um, there would have been a lot of smog and fog and all of that. Uh, it is quite a cold winter uh, as well. Okay, so let's put all that together then. So this is how all Decembers combined are looking following a hyperactive hurricane season for ACE. You can see that for all Decembers combined, we have above average heights to our west and northwest. We have below average heights to our east and southeast. And we bring in the winds from a north northeast direction. Most Decembers, on average, are favouring uh, cold weather. This is how all Januarys combined are looking following hyperactive hurricane seasons. With low pressure to the south, suggesting a bit of a subtly tracking jet stream, and high pressure perhaps centred over Scandinavia, suggesting easterly winds being favoured. So those Januarys could well, on average, be favouring uh, cold conditions also. All Februarys combined following a hyperactive hurricane season looks, uh, looks like that. Again, below average heights to the south and east, above average heights to our west and northwest, and also some degree northern blocking. Again, you would expect, on average, those Februarys to be pretty cold, I think. All Marches combined actually looks uh, looks the best, though, for northern blocking, as the high pressure really centres over Greenland in these Marches, with low pressure underneath it. Winds are in from an easy direction when uh, the marches uh, follow a hyperactive hurricane season. And all winters combined following a hyperactive hurricane season look like that. High pressure to the north and northwest. Low pressure to the south, southeast. It looks like it should be a signal for a cold winter, doesn't it? That looks like it should be the signal overall for a cold winter. Let's try to narrow things down a little bit. Uh, to just the years after 1950. Does that make any difference? Well, this is how all December's combined are looking following hyperactive hurricane seasons post-1950. We tend to get high pressure away to our north and northwest. Still, we have low pressure to our east and southeast. 
He's still bringing in the winds from the north to northeast direction. But it's the same as not to be favouring a cold and wintry month on average when we narrow it down to just after uh, the years after 1950. This is how all January is combined. Look, following hyperactive hurricane seasons post-1950, perhaps a stronger... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, perhaps a stronger northern blocking signal actually within northern latitudes. Low pressure to the south, winds in from the east. So potentially quite cold and wintry signals for those Januaries. All Februarys combined, also looking very promising if you want a cold winter post-1950, with again above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic and extending back in towards the Arctic, below average heights to our south and east winds in from the easterly direction. As we've explained, there are going to be exceptions to the rule uh, with this, but, but on average it does look as though hyperactive hurricane seasons are definitely favouring uh, like, like a colder winter. All marches combined look like that post-1950. Again, low pressure to the south, suggesting a solid tank jet stream. We're blocking around Greenland. Looks like it's a cold and wintry signal for the marches. And then lastly, for this first part of the video, um, all winters combined following a hyperactive hurricane season post-1950 looks like that. And yes, it does favour a cold winter. On average, with high, with low pressure, but average heights to both the south and the east. High pressure to the north and the northwest. We should be favouring bringing in easy winds. A cold winter uh, is is favoured, therefore, after a hyperactive hurricane season. OK, so I'm going to pause the video there. And when we come back, we're going to do it all over again. But this time, we're going to look at the biggest uh, hurricane seasons in terms of, t of the numbers, in terms of the, the number of uh, tropical storms. More about that in a second. But I'm going to pause the video there. You go and stretch your legs. Get yourself a cup of, cup of tea. Get yourself a couple of nibbles. And uh, I'll see you back very, very shortly for the rest of the second part of the 11th winter update. See you soon. Okay, we're back, and we're ready to resume um, part two of the 11th winter 2020. If you enjoyed this video, then please, can you click like? Let us know in the comments what you think, and make sure you subscribe to the Gals Weathers YouTube channel. And it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, let's resume then. Uh, so, in the first part of this uh, video, we were talking about winters following hyperactive hurricane. Uh, seasons uh, for a so no way we, we can look at it. Look at this in ter is in terms of uh, total storm numbers. So uh, let's do that then, shall we? So let's go back to uh, our uh, our page that uh, Shrian has been keeping updated uh, for us. Thank you so much, you Shrian, for all of uh, your help, uh, Shrian, uh, during this um, uh, for this video. Uh, so let's look at number of tropical storms. Number of tropical storms. Let's do that then shall we? And in terms of, so there can be quite a lot of overlap here between like the hyperactive uh, seasons and also you know, uh, total storm numbers as well. Uh, so so uh, these are our, our, our years for total storm numbers and we have 2020 of course coming out as like the biggest year for, for storm numbers, number 30 you know, 30 uh, for, for um, 2020 for this season. Uh, beats the previous uh, record for tropical storm numbers which was in 2005 so you see that there is a lot of overlap many of these uh, years are hyperactive there's a few different ones showing up though the, um, and some of them are, are above normal rather than being hyperactive for example this is just here 2011 and also 2012 and also just there 2019 even one or two of them are like near normal despite having a very high number of tropical storms they actually come out near normal uh, for ACE for example 19 1936. Anyway, let's have a look at the data. Then. So we're going to look at the top 20 uh, biggest uh, tropical storm slash hurricane uh, seasons, starting at and the winters that follow them. So starting at number 20, it's 2000, and the winter of 2000 2001 has uh, below average heights, low pressure to our south and west. It does have blocking to the north. It's quite a coldish winter, this uh, for the era. So it's not remembered as a particularly cold winter, but for this era, which in the 1990s 
and early 2000s was generally an era of very mild uh, winters. This is actually one of the colder ones, and particularly so for Scotland, where we do have a lot of northerly and easterly uh, winds. At number 19, uh, we've got 1932, 1933. So, of course, many of these are going uh, uh, to show up again uh, after seeing them like in the first part of the video. This one uh, was in the first part of the video. It's our high pressure to our east and uh, northeast, low pressure to our south. Uh, winds are in from an easterly direction. So, quite a coldish and pretty dry winter for 32, 33. This is a new one. This was not in the first uh, part of the video. This is 1916-1917. So uh, the tropical storm season uh, of um, 2000 of uh, 1916 um, was the 18th uh, biggest uh, in terms of uh, storm numbers. This is a severe winter actually, uh, with high pressure over Greenland and low pressure to the south, winds in from the east. There aren't that many severe winters in the first 40 years of the 20th century, but 1916, 1917, in the middle of World War I, uh, is, is one of them, one of the few. Uh, then we've got uh, number 17, 2008 to 2009. 08 09 is the first of the cold cluster of winters from 08 09 to uh, 12 13. Low pressure to the south, high pressure to the north, winds in from the east. Of course, it's very snowy through early February of 2009. At uh, number 16, we've got 2003 2004. Uh, so this one, again, it turned up in the uh, first part of the video, low pressure to the east, high pressure to the west. It looks like it should be quite a coldish winter, but it wasn't really. Uh, though it does get pretty cold late February and into March of 2000. And uh, for uh, next up, we have got a genuinely cold winter here. This is 1954-1955 with uh, blocking around Greenland and low pressure across northwestern Europe. Winds are in from an east to northeasterly uh, direction. Pretty mild in December of 1954, but January and February 1955 are cold and snowy. Uh, number 14, uh, the 14th uh, biggest tropical storm slash hurricane season is 1950. Again, this showed up in the earlier package of analogues. Uh, winter of 1950-1951 has its deep trough across Western Europe. Very cold in December of 1950 and then it gets milder, proper front-loaded winter. Uh, this is 1949, 1950. This is just a mild westerly winter. So again, there's always exceptions uh, to any rule. And yes, this one, despite being the 13th uh, biggest tropical storm uh, season in terms of numbers, uh, actually it's a mild winter for 1949, 1950 with a lot of west winds. Number 12 is 2017-2018, a beast from the east winter, of course, with winds in from an east to northeasty direction. On off with cold weather until late February, and then the beastly, eastly, eastly, beastly strikes. Uh, then we've got 1936-1937 at number 11. This is quite a mild winter with low pressure out to our west and bringing in uh, like west. I think it does have a brief, really cold easterly outbreak, but generally I think this is quite a mild uh, winter. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's the polar vortex of doom, 2019-2020. At number 10, look at this. A uh, polar vortex of doom uh, around Greenland and into the northern latitudes. High pressure is across southern Europe. And look at those westerlies. It's the polar vortex of doom and it's in there at number 10. Uh, 2019, 2020. This gets things back on track a little bit more if you want a colder winter. This is number nine, uh, which is 1969, 1970. Again, low pressure to the east and high pressure to the north and to the northwest. Winds are in from an easterly direction. So, again, I explained in the first part of the video, it gets cold and, uh, and wintry later in this winter. 
At number eight, we've got 2012. 2012 was the eighth most, uh, the eighth biggest uh, tropical storm season for numbers. The winter of 2012-2013 is our last properly cold winter, really, with high pressure blocking in the normal latitudes and low pressure uh, through through much of northern uh, northern West Europe. Winds are in from the east. Of course, it gets very, it's pretty mild like uh, early on, but it gets uh, colder through January. It gets colder still through February. And then March of 2013 is severely cold and snow cover. Uh, then we've got 2011, 2012 at number seven. This is a milder winter during the cluster of colder winters. So I explain how the cold cluster of winters from, from 0809 to 1213. However, it's, there's one milder winter, which is 2011, 2012. Quite a dry winter. Pretty mild, um, very cold across Eastern Europe, severe cold through the Balkans and Eastern parts of Europe. We do get one very cold spell of weather in early February of 2012. Then we've got uh, we've got 2010, but December to remember turns up at number six, uh, 10, uh, 2010, 2011, with the northern blocking up towards Greenland and the low pressure underneath it. So, of course, we know we have the December to remember in 2010, uh, the coldest December since 1890, and very nearly the coldest December in the entire uh, CET record going back to 1659. Uh, but the second half winter goes much milder. We always forget that February 2011 was actually an exceptionally mild month. At number five, we're top five now. Number five, it's 1995. So again, this turned up in the earlier package of analogues with low pressure to the south, high pressure around Scandinavia, winds are in from the east, regular easterlies during the winter of 1995-1996. It's a proper cold winter and it follows the fifth biggest tropical storm slash hurricane season. At number four, we've got 1887. So the winter of 1887, 1888, again, cold winter, high pressure out to the west, low pressure to the south and to the east, winds in from an easterly uh, direction in 1887, 1888. At number three, we've got 1933-1934. So it, this winter may have been like the, the um, or this year, 1933, may have been like the, the biggest uh, year for for uh, uh, for ACE, for, for hyperactivity. In terms of total uh, storm numbers, though, actually it's at number three. Winter of 1933-1934 is a dry and quite cold winter with high pressure sitting over the UK. At number two, We've got 2005. This for a very long time was at number one, uh, but now is is it is at number two in terms of tropical storm uh, numbers. Winter of 2005-2006 looks like it should be a cold winter, but it wasn't really. Uh, however, it does get very cold, or it does get cold uh, late in February. And into March 2006, there is a severely cold spell of weather across much of northern Europe, though. But we in the UK forget. But but late January and into early February does have an extraordinarily cold spell of weather for like northern and uh, and uh, nor northern Europe and also western parts of Russia. And then, of course, we have number one. So this is it. This is number one in terms of the biggest tropical storm slash hurricane. Uh, season in numbers. It is, of course, 2020, the current year. And the winter of 2020-2021 looks like that, as we have not yet had the winter, and we do not know what that winter has in store for us. So all we can do is uh, give you the question marks for the winter of 2020-2021. How will the reanalysis look at the end of this winter? We will find out in around uh, three months' time. But at the moment, all we can give you is questions, 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 and more questions. <laughs> OK, right, let's put all of that together then. And so this is all December's combined are coming out following the top 20 biggest tropical storm slash hurricane seasons. Again, we have above average heights to our west and northwest. We have below average heights to our east and southeast. It looks like we favour a colder month in December. 
all January's combined, looking uh, like this, following the top 20 biggest uh, hurricane seasons, tropical storm seasons. Uh, so high pressure centred over Scandinavia, wings in from the east. Definite suggestion of a Scandi high there in January, with the chance of bitterly cold easterly winds. All February's combined also has a northern blocking signal. This time the blocking is towards Greenland with, uh, with the lower pressure again. Through much of northern and western Europe again, we favour bringing in easy winds. This is looking like it favours a cold winter as well. Uh, this out all marches combined are looking loads and loads of northern blocking. Low pressure to the south, winds failed to be in from the east. The marches look like they should be combined, they should be cold too. And this is how all winters combined are looking following the top 20 uh, biggest tropical storm slash hurricane seasons. It looks like it's a signal for a cold winter with above average heights to the north, below average heights to the south, winds in from an easterly direction. Finally, if we narrow things down to just looking at the years after 1950, this is how it looks. So this is how all December's combined are looking following the top 20 biggest tropical storm slash hurricane seasons post-1950. Again, blocking to the north and northwest. Below average heights, low pressure to the east and south. Winds in from an easterly direction. Looks like those Decembers favour a cold month. All January is combined, looking mouth-watering for cold. Look at this. Post-1950, big Scandinavian high. Low pressure to the south. Winds in from the east. It looks like those Januarys favour being cold and wintry post-1950. All February's combined look very interesting as well, with above average heights to our north and northwest, below average heights to our south and east. Winds again favoured to be in from an easterly direction, cold in February, therefore. And all March is combined, uh, continuing all with blocking towards Greenland, low pressure to the south, winds in from the east. What a mouth-watering uh, set of analogues we have had uh, tonight. And lastly, this is how all winters combined are looking following the top 20 uh, biggest tropical storm slash hurricane seasons post-1950. Northern blocking, yes, high pressure within the northern latitudes, low pressure to our south winds in from the east to northeast. Again, it's nothing more than a cold signal for these uh, winters. And that's it. So uh, that's it. It's been a very extended one minutes, 42 minutes. I hope you've found part two of the 11th winter update uh, interesting and informative. With the two parts combined, you know, part one and part two, we're getting on for two hours uh, with part one and part two of the 11th winter update. Absolutely incredible and very, very epic. Nobody else anywhere on YouTube is doing this kind of content, I don't think. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. Let us know in the comments what you think. Make sure you subscribe to the Gaz Webby's YouTube channel. And that is the 11th winter 2020 20 update done and dusted in two parts. So we roll on now to the 12th update and that'll be the penultimate update. And the 12th and penultimate winter 2020 20 update will be coming up for you on Sunday and Monday. So buckle up. We've got the 12th update on the way uh, next weekend. But for, your, for the 11th update, uh, that's it. This video will be placed on Winter Updates page at gazwebis.com. There'll be a written summary that goes with it as well, so you'll be able to watch the video on demand and have a read of written summary. I shall get that up for you tomorrow morning. For the 11th Winter 2020 21 update, that's all for now, and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.